What's going on guys? Vic to be back with a Game Case Arcade video. On this one today, I'm gonna to show you how to cleanly make a permanent game capture slash streaming setup for your JJP pinball machines. Basically, we are grabbing the back glass and as you can see, everything is still intact. You can't even, you can't even tell what I did. <laughs> Stay tuned. All right, guys, you know, Joe, if you're not following me on all the socials, what are you waiting for? Be sure to follow me at Vic underscore VP. Got the link tree down in the description below. What are you waiting for? Be sure to click it. Follow me on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, as always. Yes, be sure to like, subscribe, hit the bell, and all that so you get all the updates that I do. Again, Instagram is my biggest thing with the Instagram stories. Usually Instagram stories, I take the whole day and then I post it to TikTok, so you really can't miss out now. So what are you waiting for? Be sure to follow me. It's a no-brainer. Now, if you've been watching me, yes, I've been going heavy hard on especially videos coming up to my YouTube channel on these real pinball machines. I've been loving my machines. Uh, you're looking at no joke every day. I play at least each machine. I play the Godfather for an hour and then I move over to Toy Story for an hour. This past Sunday, I had my brother over. Somebody that has never played pinball ever was on it for five hours. We were playing the Godfather for five hours. It was just a whole... It was amazing. It was a great feeling and all that. But I have more videos on that to come. Be sure to follow me. You would have seen the little sneak peek behind the scenes. But enough of that. On this one today, I'm going to be showing you guys a basically a permanent solution if you plan to stream JJP pinball machines like I do. Now I have you there on the side just to kind of show you the mod. I'm going to talk about the mod, show it to you what exactly is going on here. And then I'm going to actually teach you how to do the mod because I have to do it to my Toy Story table. So on this one, I did the Godfather. I already did it, and I'm really happy to see the outcome on it as it does work. Let's hold and wait for the strobing of the cabinet. <laughs> I love the LEDs on, yes, that strobe effect. Even on other videos, you'll see me. I'm just, it kind of just hits you like, whoa, what's happening? So again, just want to show you there, just to show you exactly what exactly it looks like. As you can see on the top, that is basically my permanent solution. Watching other streamers stream, for example, The Godfather, basically they have to remove the back glass. And when you remove the back glass, especially on this Collector's Edition Godfather, the LEDs are so blinding. And not to mention, I, I don't like playing my machine without the actual glass on it. It looks weird. It looks like, I don't know, it looks like a half-assed project and it looks like, oh, let me just stream. It's really more work to get it like set up like that. And now you kind of lost interest in streaming. Whereas my solution right now is literally one connection. I take my laptop, connect it, and I am done. I don't have to worry about removing back glass and all that. So let's first look at the mod. Let me show you exactly what's going on. And then we're gonna actually do a tutorial on Toy Story. So I'm gonna take you in closer just to show you what's going on. Honestly, with this mod, all you really need is one HDMI cable and one female to female HDMI coupler and obviously do need your game capture device. I have an Elgato 60. Uh, as you can see, there's the HD60S. I've had this for years. This captures 1080p, which is all you need for the back glass. Uh, so basically, I'm utilizing some technology that I've already had. Uh, but as you can see, this is basically the mod here. No drilling needed. All I needed was a scissor to cut old zip ties that are already in the cabinet. And then we'll put some new zip ties in to just make sure everything's in place. But no drilling. As you can see, again, I do have a collector's edition. See videos on my topper mod that I did. But basically on the top of this collector's edition and also what I see from Toy Story, which is an LE, there is already a hole on the top of your back box. Uh, the LE on Toy Story, it's covered. There's a cap. You can just remove the cap. So there was no drilling needed. As you can see, basically I have these two HDMI connections here coming from the top. And then I have my coupler here to be used when I'm not using the Elgato. Now, as far as layman's terms, basically what we have here is I have the stock HDMI that came with the actual cabinet. This was going to the original monitor in the back box. I basically rerouted up top here. I then added a separate HDMI cable that went back into the cabinet and then to the monitor. And that's really all it is. If I'm not gonna be streaming, I take these two out and then I put my coupler right in place so again if i do want to stream i just take the coupler out put my elgato and then i game on there's no need to open up the trans light and such now that you saw what it looks like in the back again yes you do see the two hdmis but they're in the rear 
You're gonna see again close up videos of my topper mod that I needed to do because of my ceiling height. Where you are, and majority of the time, nobody is ever looking at the rear of the cabinet. So this whole solution again is, it's, it's basically invisible. Um, again, it's very simple. I just have one simple USB going to my computer, which I do use a gaming laptop. You don't really need that much crazy stuff to stream. This is a very old laptop, so at least I'm able to output 1080p. And honestly, for real pinball, 1080p does work really great. You don't really need 4K, 1080p is probably the best. So now, like I mentioned, I do watch other streamers stream these cabinets. I've seen like Buffalo Pinball do like Toy Story, Flipping Out did Godfather, and basically if you look very carefully at it, he does what normally other streamers would do, which is they remove the translate. They remove this glass here. They have basically easy access to the monitor and the HDMI. They then put their game capture in the corner and then they got the... I don't really like that idea. Number one for me, again, this is my machine and I do plan to stream it. I don't want to remove my glass. It's, it's almost like you need 10 to 15 minutes to set that up. I have to now come here, get the key, unlock, hook. I didn't want to deal with that. This is my game here. This is a permanent solution where basically if I wanted to stream, it is no joke, probably a one to two minute thing and I'm up and running. Also, if I don't want to stream, I don't have to worry about taking stuff out and stuff. So again, in my situation, especially because I own the machine and I do plan to stream it, this is really probably the best way to go. So like I mentioned though, the collector's edition on the Godfather, there's so many LEDs here. If I take this off, and you've probably seen it in past videos, it is blinding. It is more work to take off the glass, disconnect the LEDs, because there's four connections for the LEDs on the monitor alone, three or four. That's just so much work. Again, this right here is probably the easiest solution, and I just love how quick and easy it is. Now, if you guys want to see an actual full-length tutorial on how to stream, let me know. I do have, for example, a coat rack that I got on Amazon. I do plan to use my phone. I've been doing a lot of trial and error. I have yet to actually physically stream, but I've been doing a lot of trial and error. I think I got a good combination of stuff, but the big thing was basically getting this game capture for this back glass image here. I'm gonna shoot a quick B-roll right now to show you the microphone sound input that I have. So aside from making sure I had the actual back glass captured, because you don't wanna put a camera pointing at the back glass, it's kind of nauseating. I'm not really a fan of how that looks. The other big thing was audio. There is no audio that goes through the HDMI on these cabinets, it's all through amps. So right now with the Elgato plugged in, I have no sound. So this is also another thing I was like, oh man, how am I gonna, you know, let you guys listen in. Uh, I'm gonna shoot some B-roll, but basically I'm taking advantage of my microphone, my Rode microphone that I have on my videos that I use. So again, right now this is not an extra expense. I, don't, I already had it, so it's pretty cool. Basically, I didn't wanna use headphones. Another option I could do is I could use the headphone jack and then split out where it goes into my Elgato and then the other one goes into headphones. I don't like playing with headphones. They kinda, I feel very restricted. So. Basically, what I have here again is my Elgato on the top. I'm gonna most likely do some B-roll, but there is an auxiliary input uh, on my Elgato. Basically, I just kind of have my microphone hanging over the ledge here, and utilizing that input, I have the microphone going right into the tweeter on the back box. Real quick before we head over to Toy Story, I'm gonna show you how I swap out the mod. So I always turn off my machines. I'm gonna take out this HDMI. I'm gonna take out this HDMI here. Luckily they're color coded, so I have a red HDMI and that. And as you can see now, I grab my coupler. I put one inside of here, it doesn't even matter where. And one over here, and done. Complete. I can now play my game normally. If I wanted to stream, I take this, this is really where it would matter. Basically the standard black is the one that is coming from the machine. So your Elgato has an in and an out. So the in will be the black HDMI and the out, in my example, is the red HDMI. And I'm set. Honestly, that is the mod right there. Again, game capture, I have my audio great. I don't have to wear headphones. I have it right against the tweeter and then obviously with OBS, I could always control and set limiter as far as the sound. I did a quick test recording and it sounds great. I do have a LUT 
on my game capture that I usually use when I do regular gaming. So I could probably remove that LUT to make the back glass more true. Uh, my LUT basically has higher contrast and a little bit less brightness, this way it's kind of like a sharper image. But all in all, the mod works. Without further ado, let's head over to Toy Story and let's do this mod. So now we're gonna start the tutorial phase. Basically, the only thing I'm really needing is I do have a 12, I think it's a 10 to 12 foot HDMI cable. I do recommend at least like, I would say 10. To be on the safe side, be sure to get a 10 foot cable. Keep in mind, this cable is gonna go to your monitor. We do need it a little bit longer because if you ever plan to pull out your monitor, you have enough slack. So basically right now, the main thing to have is a 10 to 12 foot HDMI cable and then one of these they actually come in a two pack it is a female to female hdmi coupler uh now keep in mind we are going to be doing this on toy story technically yes toy story has actually two hdmi screens you have your back glass and then you have also the ipad mini screen in the cabinet for me my elgato i can only capture one thing you might find other game captures that like you know connect two separate devices or two inputs uh in all honesty I don't think it's very needed to capture the little screen. If anything, your play field screen could get that. The only thing that's really on that screen is a Tiki Multi Ball or like the Tiki game. So that's really it. So first thing, we're gonna take off the glass and I'm gonna bring you in close. You're gonna see also another video. I don't have the machine on right now, but I did do a very simple LED mod. So I do have LEDs on my screen and I also enhanced and changed out the stock LEDs that are in the back glass. And then I also did addressable LEDs for the underbo underbody and the back box. But right now we have everything good. I'm gonna now remove the actual monitor, nice and easy, being sure I'm not gonna scratch anything. And I do wanna also kind of bring you in. I'm gonna actually probably move the camera over to that side and I'll show you what we're looking at. All right, so like I said before, you're gonna need a little bit of zips. We will be removing some zip ties, but we will be putting them back in. So you do wanna kinda keep in mind of where everything is. Also, you can note these zip ties are not very tight, uh, basically, because when you move the screen around, you do want some flexibility. You could also see my mod here. But right now, basically, and also on The Godfather, and it looks like it's true for Toy Story, um, it looks like their HDMIs are actually a DVI or even possibly a VGA in this part. No, this is a DVI. I believe it's a DVI. It's basically a very long brick. Uh, it's actually here on the, on the monitor. Um, their connections, as far as in the PC side, is actually this. It's this to HDMI. So we right now are not touching anything here. We never touch this. We're basically gonna be touching the HDMI that is coming from this monitor. So I do see there's one black zip tie. This white one might be mine that I basically put when I did my LED mod. We're gonna keep things nice and clean. I'm not gonna have any trash anywhere. Uh, it looks like my white is also here, so I'm gonna cut this too. Again, basically right now we are freeing the HDMI from the monitor. I do see this one here, so we're gonna cut this. So in total, it's about two to three zip ties. Again, I did a mod, so I might have more zip ties than you. But right now, basically, the zip ties are free. I can now take the HDMI out of the screen. Also note, my machine is off, so nothing is on right now. And we're gonna basically cleanly put this on the right. Again, try not to go near the screen. Again, you can see there, our HDMI is free. Now again, we are using the stock HDMI connections from the actual cabinet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually take this metal panel off because I'm gonna bring my HDMI from here. You may also not need to take it out, but it's kind of easier to make sure you're not pulling anything. I'm basically gonna go from here and then up. There is an opening here, so my HDMI is gonna come here and then we're going up. Right here towards the back is a simple cover that's a hole to the top of the back box. That's an easy push out. So right now, I'm gonna remove this metal plate. It's definitely easier to remove it entirely. Don't just take two screws out and then bend. We're gonna remove this metal plate and then we're gonna snake our wire through. Okay, so honestly, you could actually just remove the two right screws, but you don't wanna bend this too much. Basically, this is a wide open cavity here, but at the top here, there is a circle with a grommet, a hole basically. So again, we're also gonna do, we're gonna kill two birds with one stone. 
I'm gonna snake the existing HDMI cable through and I'm also gonna bring in the new HDMI. So let's first work on the stock HDMI. So again, making sure that nothing is in the way. Everything is kind of clear, especially when you pull up. You can see that I'm not in the way. I'm gonna take my HDMI, I'm gonna bring it here. Again, it's a wide open cavity, but the big thing is this kind of opening here. Be sure also this HDMI, you wanna go slow. This HDMI cable has like this grounding kind of barrel right there. Cool. So we're just gonna make sure again, everything is nice and tight, pushing it through, trying not to bend or flex this metal plate too much. And my HDMI is in. So also as you can see there, HDMI is pretty tight. Doesn't have to be super tight, but I have some slack. I got this here. Let's now bring down though the new HDMI. So real quick right here, you can actually physically see it's a little cap. I could put my finger through it. Like I said, there's already an existing hole. That's the cap there. So I just put my finger through. I'm gonna now snake down the new HDMI. So utilizing a stool, again, I have my 10 to 12 foot HDMI cable. I'm gonna send it down from the top, nice and easy. So as you can see, again, this hole is already here. There's no drilling needed. I'm gonna take this HDMI, we have to go down the same hole you bought the HDMI through. Again, nice and easy. Don't wanna force anything. And basically now we are going to cleanly, making sure nothing, we don't like kind of tangle up in wires. Nice and easy, we're gonna feed and push, feed and push, and down. That is it. We now could go ahead and we could actually put these two screws back because we are basically done here. Now real quick, just to take you on my side, if I pull this, just to kind of show you what it looked like. If I could just move my camera around. Again, you could see there, it's a wide open pocket here. And then we have a hole here with a grommet up top. So again, very simple. Just being sure that you're not tangled into these wires. Those are very important PC wires. And now we're gonna seal this back up. So since I have my stool here, I'm gonna actually take the existing wire that's coming from the machine. We're gonna put it through the hole here. Sometimes you might have to actually do it before the new HDMI because of their barrel, but nope, I'm good. I cleared it. So now I have the existing HDMI from the machine. Again, I never touched the PC of it. This is basically set and done. Try to give me as much slack without forcing too much. And yeah, I have enough slack there. Now let's focus on the new HDMI. So now I'm gonna bring this HDMI down and the best thing is that we're gonna connect it to the monitor and then we're gonna work on slack with zip ties. So we can actually take the time now and put the screws back in this. Be sure again, your HDMI cable should be free. Make sure they're not pinched, but basically I already put one screw in. I'm gonna take this. You wanna make sure that these screws in go easily. Shouldn't be any force to put these in. And awesome, again, stay tuned, watch my other videos talking about my LED mod. So I did have a little LED strip here and that is it. Let's now get to zip tying. All right, so now again, we're gonna focus on the red here. Again, this is 10 feet in total. So I have a lot of slack in the back box above, but as you can see, we do need to give this slack. So as you can see, I could always pull from the top here, give it some slack in. And no worries, that sound is coming from the hole up above, nice and easy here, as you can see. Awesome, so you gotta remember your arm, this arm goes to the left, this arm goes to the right. So we're gonna basically be sure to give it some slack. We're not gonna zip tie this just yet, but it's gonna be something like this, uh, either on the left side or the right side. I'm gonna aim for most likely the right side here, or even the left. Now I'm gonna aim for, I don't know, no. I'm gonna aim for the top here. I'm gonna have the HDMI here up top, like that, I'll go down here and then down below. So again, my main thing right now, I still wanna give myself some slack. I don't have enough cable still. So again, going from the top, and don't worry, that sound you hear is basically this kind of wire mesh thing on the HDMI, this coating. Cool. So again, I'm gonna connect this. Again, this is my new HDMI going into the HDMI. There's only one HDMI going into this monitor. And now the big thing is that we have to do clean wiring, being sure that there is slack. Now, as far as the zip ties, you're gonna wanna use these medium sized ones. You can't use the extra small ones. It won't wrap around. 
So again, I kind of work backwards and you don't want to do this too tight. You want some kind of breathing room. So again, I have my power wire here. That's for my LED strip. You don't have that, but I have it here. So I'm going to put this on the right side. I also have this existing power cable that's going to the um, actual monitor. So same thing, this is pretty tight. I'm gonna now connect this here like this. I'll probably put two zip ties here to be safe. But again, the big thing is that you don't want it to be too tight. Again, keeping my eye here, gonna cut this. This is pretty good right here. I'm good here. Awesome. So I got one here. Again, see, I don't want this too tight. I have too much tension on this, honestly. Because again, you want to make sure that your screen, if you're going to pull it out more, if it does go out more, I'm kind of maxed out, but this could also pull a little bit there. So I do have actually freedom. So now I'm going to focus on one, definitely up top. I want my HDMI one here. So I'm going to put this not too tight though, because I do need this to breathe. And again, I still have some slack above, so I could definitely give this in. This way it's here. I'm gonna probably put this as two. So I'll put an I'll put zip tie there, and also gonna put one in the rear. Again, I'm keeping this cable on top. This way it doesn't interfere when the monitor is closed. So there you go. Again, it's not too tight. I can still pull a little bit if I have to. Awesome. Gonna bring my attention now to this one. This is the power cable for my LEDs and for the monitor. So I'm gonna give this from underneath, making sure I have this here. Again, this might be a trial and error kind of thing. Cool, don't want the connector exactly underneath the bolt, but you don't want it to, again, this was already kind of loose as is. I'm gonna put one more now here Again, not too tight. That's the big thing. You don't want this too tight. I'm gonna make sure that we get the wires inside of this. So this, bring in this here. Again, that is to my LEDs. I'm gonna try to keep this up above, I guess. Again, not too tight, but it's not too loose where it's gonna fall apart. So. Let's see now. So again, HDMI's are in. I'm gonna cut these tabs, but I'd rather right now make sure that the monitor close, closes. So right now, again, HDMI is good. Let's try to close this up. So here we go, let's see. Again, keep my eye on everything as I close it up. This way we know I'm not breaking anything. So, so far so good and we are good. Awesome. I'm good. I have enough slack here. That was my scissors that dropped. Cool. That is it. So as you can see again, you want to make sure that when you're opening this, there's got to be some slack. This HDMI, you can see here, it's not too tight. I could still even give it a little bit, but I'm good to go right here, honestly. And you can see my slack here. Let's cut these edges. You don't want zip tie wings. So we got one. We got, oh, I could have actually put the, I should have put the HDMI inside of here, but that's okay. It's not in the way. Two, three, four, and I'm gonna leave just a little bit. I'm leaving a little bit of a tab, yes, so that in case I have to pull more. But that is honestly it. We right now, I hate putting, I, don't, I never put garbage on my, my machines on the glass. But we right now could, close this up. Again, keeping in mind, I'm keeping my eye here. This is all good here. And yeah, we are good. Awesome. Boom. That's it. So now take a look at the top. Again, I have the stock. This is going to the computer here. Again, black. The black HDMI that's coming from the JJP computer. And then now, as you can see, as far as the red, I still have, you know, I have about, I don't know, what is that, three, four feet? So you could get like an eight foot cord. Again, it's up to you. Also keep in mind, like right now, that means I have to put my Elgato has to be up above here. Um, you could always kind of do extenders if you want. But basically, I'm gonna grab my coupler and connect these. So I have coupler in hand. Again, female, female. 
And now as far as like the excess that I have with this HDMI, I could basically push it inside the actual cabinet. And you know, you could kind of ride it along here. You know, you could kind of bunch it up if you want. I mean, I do have a lot. Again, you could probably get a smaller cord, but again, it depends on your situation. For example, here, I, I, I would only be limited to having the Elgato here. I kind of want it there on the side, like I do have a Godfather. So again, it's all about how you want to do it. Like this, for example, here, I could basically zip tie this here and just kind of tuck it right here if I want. Just again, be sure you're not interfering with any wires. You don't want to cover up the fan. That's like your exhaust fan or intake fan. So, you know, some kind of like that. That's it, we're done. So I'm gonna turn my machine on. We're basically done. We got my screen LEDs on, basically connected via Molex. That's always a good sign when you get the Jersey Jack logo. On my like Toy Story, the, the TV has to be to the left and then making sure like it's in the right spot. But right now, I'm basically good to go. Again, we have a good image there. I'm gonna put my glass back on because honestly, I will never have to open this up ever again. And awesome, so as you can see, my LED mod, it's a 360 mod blocking out the camera and forky. Again, you'll see that in a future video, but just wanna show you off. Again, I don't need the stool, but I just kinda grab it now. Right up top here, that's my connection here. The only thing about these, this, this situation, I'm pretty sure with other JJPs, their hole, again, this hole is really for the topper. That's how I discovered it on Godfather. The topper has the power and the USB, they utilize this hole. The hole is more to the left. I really kind of want my Elgato to be on the right side. I want to put my laptop on the right side. But again, using the stock HDMI, I may or may not be able to do that. But worst case, I have a lot of slack on the left side. And again, you can see when I'm not using it or when it's done, just kind of gets thrown behind the back box. That is it. I will never have to open up this glass ever again. Same situation with the Godfather. I could always put my microphone here. I do plan to put like toys up here. Um, unfortunately, again, with my... People don't understand my low ceiling height. Um, I have, for example, a buzz. Buzz doesn't fit. Not even sit. <laughs> Woody doesn't fit. I have to kind of jam his head. Um, he doesn't fit. <laughs> so people don't understand really how low my ceiling is. But there you go. That mod is done. I'm gonna grab my laptop and let's see how it looks streaming. All right, so I have basically the Elgato set up right now, so I'm gonna turn it on. Again, be sure you wanna do all this with the screen off. Uh, that's probably the best thing, or I should say the cabinet off. So as you can see, my Elgato is up here. I was really, I wanted to make sure it would go on the right side, and it does. Pretty cool, I have it all set up. Basically, I'm gonna turn off the cabinet, and then I'll show you putting it like to regular mode. But right now, so far, so good. We're getting the screen capture there, so everything is normal. I can see it on my Elgato software here. Again, I use OBS and my Elgato. Uh, the laptop, usually I do have it direct power connected. Uh, this way you can kind of really utilize everything. And we're just waiting for this to turn on. But right now we have a signal up here. Our mini screen, we didn't change anything about it, so I have nothing to worry about that. And awesome, I can see it there. That's it, we're ready to stream. Now real quick, I'll show you how we basically change it to I'm no longer streaming and just leaving it regular gameplay. So again, turning off the cabinet, I'm a big person of that. You don't wanna do this with the cabinet on, only cause like screen resolutions maybe or stuff like that. So doesn't matter, this coupling is just a coupler so it doesn't matter what's in or out. I'm gonna take now my Elgato, not letting go of my HDMI, even if they fall to the back, I still have a little stack to reach it. Uh, but basically now, I got my Elgato in hand that's out of the way. Coupler is up. I'm gonna now put my game back on. And while that loads up, I'll just kind of put my HDMI's back. You'll know everything is good once you see the JJP logo. That's it. Again, as you can see, we are free. Right now, the Godfather is basically set up just like this. Coupler, HDMI is going in the rear and all done. Again, I only have two pinball machines, so I could always put my laptop here. Um, you know, I have to also keep in mind that if I put the toys, you know, is it gonna be an easy kind of reach around? But worst case scenario, I could reach it here. I have enough space here. 
and you'll be back to gaming. Again, I just, I'm not a fan of like, you know, removing this and to me, it's, this is no joke, maybe two minutes. It probably takes me longer to get the stool out, stand on it, and then connect if I want to just make it simple. But as you can see, we are back to gaming. That's it. Be sure to check out my other videos, especially pertaining to the LED mod, and also as you can see, the underbody glow mod that I did with addressable LEDs. And uh, yeah, I could control it all uh, from my phone. Cool. There you guys have it. The JJP, I don't know, permanent streaming slash backlash capture mod. Awesome.